So Rachel Cunliffe and Aaron Vastani here with me to go through some of those front pages. Um, and Rachel, the vast majority of them going with the um, big day for, for, for the Labour Party today, uh, a highly critical report, first of all, into Labour's handling of anti-Semitism uh, complaints, and then uh, the Labour leader suspending his predecessor uh, over his reaction to that report. You picked out the Daily Telegraph, first of all. Uh, their headline, Shaming of Corbyn Sparks Labour, Labour Civil War. Yes, while I'd much rather uh, talk about Basil Brush, uh, most of the headlines are leading on uh, Corbyn and uh, the report into anti-Semitism in Labour by the Equality and Human Rights Commission that was published today. And uh, pretty, some pretty damning findings from them. They actually found that the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn uh, broke the law, acted unlawfully um, in, in its harassment and, 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 and allegation, uh, in its, its complaints process. Um, and uh, that should have been the main story today. But instead, the main story is actually the response of the former leader, Jeremy Corbyn, who was uh, given the chance to comment on this report that he knew was, was, was coming. Um, and uh, instead of apologising, instead of saying that he uh, regretted what it had found uh, and, and that he hoped Labour could um, accept the recommendations and move on. He said that he didn't accept all the findings and, in fact, they had been um, dramatically overstated, basically, by, by his political opponents. So, refusing there to take responsibility, he left uh, Keir Starmer pretty much no choice in, in, in suspending him, given that Starmer has, was saying pretty much at the exact same time that anyone who claimed that the problem of anti-Semitism within Labour was exactly exaggerated was themselves part of the problem. So this report, which I guess we would have hoped had drawn the line under anti-Semitism in, in the Labour Party, seems to have just sparked the next chapter of it. Well, yes, and it is an extraordinary moment, isn't it, Aaron, for, for a Labour leader to, to sack his predecessor from the party. Mm -hmm. But do you think he had a choice? Well, it's, it's certainly unprecedented. I mean, this has not happened before, as, as far as I'm aware. I just want to correct, correct on something very quickly. Jeremy Corbyn, on a Facebook status, very, very clearly said he welcomed all of the recommendations in the report. He said that in black and white. So that's that's not entirely accurate, what Rachel just said. Um, and also the report furthermore he said, he said that significant the findings. Problems. He said he didn't accept no, no, he, the findings. No, Rachel, and, and Rachel, we can, Rachel let, please, no, no I, I didn't interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you. You said he didn't accept the recommendations going forward. I'm telling you, if you go onto his Facebook page, if the people watching this go there, that's not true. Uh, in terms of, Rachel, what you said in terms of the, the bigger story, I agree with that entirely. I think it's been un overshadowed. It shouldn't have been. I think the EHRC document's a brilliant document. Uh, I'm very grateful to live in a country where there's an official you know, national organisation that can uh, can come up with these reports. I think it was really positive. Uh, but rather than an opportunity for hundreds of thousands of people to to learn, and, and, and as you've said, Rachel, for the Labour Party to move forward, the story instead is Jeremy Corbyn being suspended by his successor. But, but, but just to pick up on what he said in reaction to the report that, that Rachel mentioned, he said that the mm. scale of the problem was dramatically overstated for political reasons. I, see, I mean, the EHRC explicitly in the report talks about uh, people's uh, freedom of speech to defend their own actions. And I, he's not denying they exist. He said anti-Semitism exists in the Labour Party. He said it shouldn't be welcome in the Labour Party. And he said, I accept all the recommendations going forward. I can only repeat, people should go to his Facebook page to, to see for themselves. Now, I don't think what he said was particularly strategic, or I wouldn't have said it. Uh, but is that sufficient grounds to suspend somebody from the Labour Party? Well, we'll have to find out. Uh, when asked what rules he'd actually broken, uh, the Party General Secretary, David Evans, wouldn't give them to the party's NEC, who are meant to be consulted in advance of anything like this regardless. Uh, the question then has to be asked, do you, do you trust people like David Evans or Keir Starmer to administer the British state when they can't even run a party properly by its own rules? One of the key findings today was that there shouldn't be political interference by party leaderships. And we saw that literally happen within minutes. Uh, and so I think I think it asks questions about the capacity of these people to run a large organisation. If they can't do that, can they really run the, the British state, the sixth largest economy in the world? I don't think so. Rachel? 
I don't think Aaron was, was quite that passionate about the competence of the people uh, running the Labour Party complaints process when Jeremy Corbyn was in charge. And one of the things that the report says, one of the findings that I, I imagine is what Jeremy Corbyn was referring to when he said he did not accept all the findings, was that the leader's office had interfered on just 20, 23 occasions of the just 70 complaints that they looked at. The leader's office had interfered inappropriately uh, in order to uh, disrupt the complaints process. And the report also says that the uh, failure of Labour to tackle anti-Semitism was not down to ability, but down to a lack of, of willingness to do so, again, from the leader's office. Now, the reason that uh, I think that, that Jeremy Corbyn, that the, the Labour have given for, I'm not sure they've given it, but others in the Labour Party have suggested, is uh, for bringing the party into disrepute. And to look at a report that has come out today that specifically says there were issues with the leader's office and the way these reports were handled from the top to say, I don't accept the findings, uh, and by the way, I think they were politically motivated. That is bringing the party into he didn't say that. Shows a complete he didn't say lack that. of accountability. He says, I do, do not expect all the findings. That's the second thing you've said which wasn't accurate. For political reasons. That is what he said. That's a no, no. First of all, you, we start at the beginning of this programme. What's happened here? And this is barely being mentioned. Two agents of the Labour Party have been found to, to have broken the law. Two. One of who is Ken Livingston. And you're absolutely right, Rachel. Jeremy Corbyn interfered in the process there to get the guy thrown out. And he shouldn't have. And you may remember Tom Watson at the peak of all this stuff saying, I want the cases on my desk first thing Monday morning. That was precisely the problem. The media was saying Jeremy Corbyn has to get a handle on this, has to get involved, and now we're being told actually that was part of the problem. Now, I think Labour made catastrophic failings over a number of years. I think the complaints process wasn't up to scratch. I think actually the Labour Party generally as an organisation hasn't been fit for purpose for probably for probably the best part of 15 years in a number of ways. It's, it's part of the reason why it keeps on losing general elections. Uh, but look, the, the general secretary, the leader of the party, has to give the reason for why the guy's been suspended, and, and they haven't done that. And so, you know, we have to talk about basic elementary questions of due process, principles of natural law, equality under the law. Uh, and, and, and that doesn't seem to be what's driving this. And so the only conclusion can be they're not that serious about this. This is okay. still being treated as a political football and public relations rather than what it is, a hugely important political question. I'm going to get through some, some more of the front pages. Uh, Rachel, The Guardian next. Uh, Labour plunged into crisis after uh, Corbyn suspended. Um, he has had John McDonald uh, come out uh, to uh, condemn his suspension, Len McCluskey as well. I mean, how much is this a crisis for Labour now? How much division is there going to be as a result of today? I think there's certainly going to be a, a high degree of division. I think that was inevitable because, unfortunately, if you inherit a party that has such a, a toxic attitude to anti-Semitism, as Keir Starmer did, you are either going to end up uh, upsetting and alienating the people who allowed that culture to flourish, the anti-Semites within it and those who supported them, or you are going to continue to alienate the Jewish community and, indeed, anyone who believes, who can see, that Labour's attitude to anti-Semitism over the past few years has been abhorrent. You have to pick a side on Unfortunately, you can't please everyone. Now, we're talking about a civil war now, as though a civil war hasn't been going on within Labour for the mm. past four years. There are a lot of people who are suddenly very concerned about a unified party, um, needs to, the party to be unified, to be electable, a divided party doesn't win elections. These people were not really the ones trying to unify the party when Jeremy Corbyn was, was leader and when so many Jewish Labour members, so many people who support Labour but um, support Labour's left-wing values but couldn't handle the level of anti-Semitism within the party were raising concerns, they weren't really worried about unifying it then and about bringing those voices within. So it seems that they're a lot more worried about alienating uh, supporters of Jeremy Corbyn than they ever were about alienating Jews. Um, I'm going to rattle through a couple more of the front pages, um, Aaron. The Daily Mail says RIP Corbyn's legacy of hate. Uh, the Jewish Telegraph uh, saying whipped. But in contrast to that, we've got uh, the Morning Star saying anti-racist to his core. So perhaps some of those front pages, as you would predict, they would go. But um, to go back to Keir Starmer's actions, um, Aaron, uh, did he not need to take a tough line in, in order to show the party was taking on board some of the, the lessons of the report, which, which was damning, which I'm, I'm sure you will agree was, was pretty tough, wasn't it? And, and he has to make the party one that Jewish people feel safe in. 
Well, I think actually Keir Starmer did the precise opposite because his actions today have undermined the primary story, which should have been this report. Uh, it's undermined a historic opportunity for thousands of people to learn about anti-Semitism, which is clearly an issue. It's an issue also in, you know, in the Labour Party and the left as well as society more generally, but it's clearly in the Labour Party. And that opportunity was, was missed. Uh, frankly, it's been overshadowed, it's been undermined. And as I've already said, one of the principal uh, recommendations within the report is that any complaints process is independent uh, of the Labour Party leader and the General Secretary's office. And we've had literally the same day the General Secretary's office uh, suspend a Labour Party, a former Labour Party leader. And so I, I, I'm not quite sure, really. I think in many ways it just makes a mockery of the whole report. I thought the, the report was very sober, uh, highly analytical, very rigorous. And rather than actually stick to that, which is what we should be doing, we've returned to some partisan hysteria, which actually, frankly, the people that suffer the most from that is, is, is Britain's Jewish community. It's a, it's a huge tragedy that this opportunity has not been taken for introspection within the Labour Party, but of course, you know, society more broadly. OK, I'm sure this is a subject that we will return to in the next hour, but for now we're going to take a pause. Um, 